finally the time has come to talk about superglobals. Superglobals are essential to PHP's applications because in most applications you would want to accept input from the forms and from the users, you would want to persist sessions and work with cookies and upload files and look into requests and so on. Superglobals are basically built-in variables that are always available within all scopes throughout your PHP code. We will be covering the server, get, post, files, cookie, session and request superglobals. And we'll talk about the env superglobal once we get to the environment variables and config files lesson. The first superglobal that we're going to talk about in this lesson is the server superglobal which contains the information about the server and execution environment. The content of the superglobal will vary from server to server depending on your server's configuration. Some may contain more information and some may contain less. Let's review some of these things that are contained within the server superglobal. For example we have the home key here that points to the home directory, we have the HTTP host, we have the script file name that contains the name of the script that's running, we have the server port, server address, we have the document root which points to the public directory and then we have the request DRI which is just a slash if we visited a different page here something like full bar then we see that the request URI is changed to slash foo slash bar. We also see the request method that's set to get in this case and we'll talk about the get and post in the next lesson so don't worry about it for now. We have the query string which is set to empty here but if we added a query string here something like test equals to one we see that the query string is now set to test equals one and we see that that's also included within the request URI here. You also have the remote address that contains the IP address from which the user is viewing the current page and you also also have the remote host that is just the host name where the user is viewing the current page. You have things like remote port, remote user, HTTP refer, if available HTTP user agent to get the client side information like the browser and so on. But you will most likely not use most of these. So I wouldn't worry about it too much right now. Once you actually need them you will read up on them in Google or in PHP documentation and you'll figure out how it works. I'm going to leave the link to the documentation in the description so check it out if you want to know more about these. So when would you actually use the server superglobal? There are many use cases for this variable and it depends on your application's needs. One such use case is to build basic routing. Right now all of our routes hit the index.php. That is good because index.php is the entrance to our application and from index.php we can decide what script to run based on the requested URL. This is what basically routing is. Routing allows us to structure the application in a better way and in any way we want. We'll talk about routing more once we get to the MVC pattern but let's actually build a very simple routing in this lesson. So the goal is that when we visit a page something like invoices we may want to run index method on the invoice.php class. If we visited something like customers then we may want to run index method on the customer.php class. If we visited something like slash invoices slash create then we may want to run create method on the invoice.php class and so on. Now there are many different ways of implementing routing and router in general. You can go full dynamic and have it dynamically load pages or use routes mapping where you predefine and map all the available routes to their corresponding action classes and methods. There are also packages available that you could install via composer to make this easier and not have to do it from scratch. Or you could simply use a framework. For this lesson though I'm going to build a very simple router using mapped routes so please don't use this anywhere in production it's just for you to understand and learn how routing works. We will go in more detail about routing once we get to the MVC pattern so don't worry about it too much I just want to show you the basics of it and I'm also going to use this basic routing for the next few lessons to better demonstrate how the other super globals work and how you would use them in real application. So let's get started the first thing we need is that we need to create a router class with a method to register the route so I'm going Going to move this here and let's instantiate some kind of router here new app router and let's create this class and we don't need the constructor for now instead of constructor we're going to have a single method called register for now and the register method should take in the given route and the given action and the action can either be a callable or an array containing the class and a method so let's do callable for now also let's enable strict types because that's how I like to work and this method is simply going to return itself so we'll return self. The next thing we need is a property to store these routes right so we need to store the route and the action mapping 
mapping so we need some kind of property so we can do something like this routes route equals action and then return this so we can create private array routes and we're good to go now if we go to index.php we can register some routes here so we can do router register and the first route we'll register is for the home page so we'll map the slash page to some kind of callback for now then we can map invoices page to invoices and so on now of course if i go to the home page this is not going to work because we don't have a way to resolve this we just registered it but we haven't resolved anything so that means we need to add a method here called resolve which should take in the requested url and then we can parse that requested url to figure out which action to run if we scroll down to the content of the server variable we see that request dri is something that we can use to parse if we visit some kind of page like invoices with some query string we see that request dri contains the whole thing so we could use that however we don't need anything from here we only need the route so we don't need the query string we can access the query string by using the get super global which we'll talk about it in a next lesson but for this parsing we only care about everything before the question mark so we need to parse this and ignore everything after the question mark so let's simply accept the request uri here and what we can do is that we can use the explode function to explode this string using the question mark as the delimiter and use the first element in the resulting array as our route so we can do something like this route equals explode question mark request uri and simply use the first element in the array the next thing we need to do is to actually get related action based on that route since we're storing the registered routes in this routes property here with the action as the value we can simply look that up right so we can do action equals to this routes and then pass in the route here and if in case it's not set then we can just set it to null by default now we can add some kind of handling when a non-existing route is requested in the browser we can maybe throw an exception or show 404 page or something like that in this case we can throw an exception and then later we can catch that exception wherever we need and then render some kind of 404 page so let's simply do if not action throw new route not found exception and we can create this exception quick and let's extend the base exception and we can get rid of this and right now everything is within the namespace app the proper way would be to place this within the exception namespace so we can do something like this app exceptions and let's create that directory here and let's move that in there we can now import this class here and looks good the other thing that we need to do is we need to override the message property here and set it to something like 404 not found so let's close that out and let's continue the next what we need to do is that we know that the action is callable right because we've type hinted here that it's callable so we can either directly call that callables or we can use php's call user func function to call that callable so we can pass in action here and we don't have any arguments at the moment so this is fine and we can return the return value of that from this method now if we go to the index.php we can echo out the result of the resolve method and we can pass in the request uri now let's get rid of this print r from here let's refresh the page and sure enough we're getting invoices printed on the page which means that we're hitting this route right here now if we go to the home page we're hitting the home route which is this right here if we go to a page that doesn't exist we're getting the route not found exception with the 404 not found message so everything is working as expected so far now you probably wouldn't want to put all your logic into callback functions like this you probably would want to use something called controllers which we'll talk about later but in this case maybe we want to run some kind of method on some kind of class what if we wanted to do something like this pass in an array with a class name and the method name so when we hit the home page we may want to run an index method within the home.php class and the home.php class can be within the app classes home and we can get the class name this way and then comma and put the method name here which can be index and let's put that on the same line and let's create this class let's add index method here and let's return home from here let's also declare strict types here and let's continue now because the register method returns the self object we can simply chain these here so we can chain another register here and now create the invoice class and the index method on that so let's create that let's add the strict types and add the index method and let's return invoices so let's set the route to invoices and the third route that we want to create is invoices create and this call 
calls the method create on the invoice class. So if we go here, let's create a method create and this returns create invoice string. Of course, instead of returning strings, you would probably return views, but we haven't talked about views yet and we'll talk about that later in the course. So let's get rid of this from here now and let's move this up here. And if you wanted to, you could also change the resolve on this, but let's leave it like this for now. Now, if we refresh the page, we're getting the fatal error that the argument two must be of type callable, but we're giving array. That means that we need to adjust our register method. So if we go in here, instead of expecting just callable, we can expect either callable or array. Let's refresh the page now and we're getting route not found exception. Let's visit the home page and we're getting another fatal error saying that this function is expecting a valid callback, but we're really giving it an array, which is fine, but the index method is not static. In order for this to work, we need to give it the object as the first element of the array and then the method name as the second element of the array and then it would work or the method needs to be static so if we change the index function here to be static and run the code this will work but we don't want methods to be static here so what we need to do is that we need to check if the action is callable if it's callable then just call that action directly if it's not callable then create the object of the class so we can do something like this if is callable action then let's move this up here otherwise if it's not callable we know that it's going to be an array because we have type hinted it here but to be safe we can check if it's array and only then try to resolve a method from the class and if it's not an array for whatever reason we can throw the same exception here that it's not found so let's work through resolving the class method so we can simply destructure the action variable into class and method and then we can check if the class exists to create the class object so we can do class equals to new class and we don't need to pass anything in for now and then right here we can check if the method exists and if it exists then we can simply return call user func array and pass in the class and method and we don't have any arguments at the moment now the reason i want to use call user func array here is because if we want to specify x amount of arguments this is a better way to specify it using array instead of specifying each individual arguments here all right so let's run the code now and see if this works we refresh the page and sure enough we're getting home now let's visit invoices page and it prints invoices let's visit invoices create page and we are getting create invoice which means that it's executing the proper code based on the routes that we registered in the index.php if we visit a page that doesn't exist then we get that 404 not found exception. So as you can see, we have implemented a very simple routing. And as I mentioned before, this is not to be used for production. It's just for you to understand how routing works and it will make it easier to understand how routing works in frameworks. Also, we're going to refactor this in the next lesson because right now all the routes are being assumed that it's get requests, where if we were making a put request or a post request or a delete request, in those cases, the routes can conflict, right? We can have a get request to slash invoice Voices, but we could also have post requests to slash invoices. So this is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, share and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.